Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and this morning I have my keto grocery haul and we're gonna do a little cooking today. Um, as you can see at Aldi, I spent $30.16 for the week and I'll go over what I bought and what my plan is. So first things first, I went to what's called the Backwoods Fest here in Ohio and it's like a craft fair outdoors in the woods, but it's really artisans. I mean, they make some fabulous stuff, but I got this pumpkin and it's a real pumpkin and it's white and I'm super excited and it was $2 and 50 cents and I love it. And then the other thing I picked up, keto friendly, was a bag of pork rinds. They were frying these up while I was there. This not so much, it was $8, but I know that homemade pork rinds are pretty labor intensive. So I grabbed that. Then I went to Aldi. I got two dozen eggs. These eggs were 74 cents a dozen. So I grabbed two. I got some sweetener for my coffee. Some extra sharp cheddar. Some Swiss. Cheddar cheese shredded for my chaffles. Mozzarella. I'm going to be making, so I have to work at my part-time job a lot this week, so I'm going to make some chaffle sandwiches for the freezer, and I'll show you those. But I'm going to do salami and ham sandwiches, and then whatever's left, I will probably just put in the freezer of this lunch meat. I grabbed some breakfast sausage for, well, breakfast this week. I grabbed some onions. I only needed one creamer. I had some extra in the fridge, and then I grabbed three bags of pork rinds. So my plan is to make a hamburger or cheeseburger casserole, and I have the burgers thawing to make cheeseburger casserole. I'm going to have eggs and cheese for breakfast, and then my normal dinner is just grab and go. Um, like, I will be working Thursday night, Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday this week, so I needed a lot of food on the fly. So I'm going to make sandwiches to take with me, and I will bring you along. We're gonna start off with breakfast. I've got eggs boiling. I took one pound log of Aldi breakfast sausage, which is super clean, in an eight by eight pan, and I'm just going to smoosh it out here. When it comes out of the oven, I'll just cut it into portions for the week. I'm just not in the mood to <laughs> make patties and do all of that today. When I can just bake it as one piece of sausage, and cut it up. Why not? Isn't that easier? Now, if you wanted to make something fancy, you could totally use this as a crust for like a sausage pizza um, or pizza, I suppose this would be. Um, you could put some cheese on here, some shredded zucchini, cut it for the chaffles. But I'm just going to have a nice basic breakfast, some sausage, some cheese, and some eggs. Or maybe I'll have it for a meal later in the day. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll know when I pack my lunch what I'm going to have each day, but I'm just doing some prep. I do have a sink of soapy water behind me so I can wash my hands. Oven's not to temperature yet, but that is ready. It's just going to bake. I didn't have to do anything. No grease, nothing. And when it comes out of the pan, I will just cut it up into pieces and portion it out. My eggs, if you want to know, are boiling. Well, they're going to come up to a boil. They're on high. What I do is bring them to a boil. I let them boil for a minute or two, and then I turn the oven on or the stove off, and I let them just come cool off in the pan, or I'll shock them in some cold water. I have found that shocking them in cold water does help them peel better, and since this is a... Um, fresh eggs. I'll probably shock them in cold water, but they got a while to go. So we'll let them do their thing. The hamburger for the cheeseburger casserole is thawing and I'm just kind of breaking it up a little bit to get it to fall better. Uh, yeah, these were one pound of organic ground beef that I bought at Target on a super sale. Each package was 49 cents. They had a $5 off. It was like a use by or sell by that day. So I brought it home and threw it in my freezer. So now I'm thawing it out and I will make the casserole. Once this is thawed, it's not ready yet, but I wanna, you know, bring it up to temperature. So I just have it in this bowl and every once in a while I'll come by with a fork and just break it up. 
that helps with that. And yeah, that's it. I'm getting ready to make some chaffles. So let's bring you over here and I can show you how I start that process. Got the chaffle mix. Chaffle. <laughs> it is an egg and cheese waffle is what it is. That's what the mixture will look like and it's pretty thick consistency, which is what you want. Um, what you're going to put in here, now I made a lot because I'm going to make sandwiches ahead and freeze them for the week. But the basic recipe to get two chaffles for my Dash waffle maker back here, this is a little Dash, it's called, that's the brand. Um, one egg, so just one regular egg to a half a cup of cheddar cheese. That's your base recipe. And that just makes a cheese waffle. Oh, the oven's at temperature. I added some garlic and herb seasoning to this, and this is just Kingford. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree, to be honest with you, but it's really good. So I added some of that, because I thought the flavors would go good with the salami and ham. And then I added, again, a little Parmesan cheese, just for an Italian flair, but you don't have to do that. The basic recipe, like I said, one egg to a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And I'm having some coffee. These take a while to cook. I don't know how many minutes. It really just kind of depends on your mixture. But this is what I do. I take a spoon. And I do two spoons. This is just a kitchen spoon. And what I try to do is get it as even as possible in the little waffle maker. But don't overfill it. It will overflow. Because the eggs will puff up a little bit. There we go. I can see a little bit of the black, but that's okay. So it's in there pretty good. Close it and let it go. I mean, I wanna say, I'll time one and let you know how long they take to make. Um, I like mine crispy. If you undercook them, the egg will be cooked, but they'll be soft. You really wanna cook them until they're crunchy, and then they will hold that bread-like consistency when you let them refrigerate or freeze or however you're storing them. They do freeze well. Yesterday I took a chaffle sandwich to the sh uh, shoe to work the Buckeye game, and I had froze, I cooked two eggs and my chaffle and froze it, and it was very good yesterday, so it does work. So I'm just letting this go. It's gonna take a few minutes, and then we'll be back. It's time to make my cheeseburger casserole, Big Mac casserole, there's a million names for it. Uh, my disclaimer is this is not my recipe by any stretch of the imagination it is not mine i just watched a lot of videos and looked at a lot of recipes and this is what i came up with um, so your mileage may vary um, definitely check pinterest if these aren't the ingredients you want but i am definitely thinking this is going to be delicious so i have five eggs in the bowl whole eggs and a couple tablespoons of heavy cream just to give it a little more fat i'm putting in some pink Himalayan sea salt. And remember, this is a lot to, to season. Now I did cook the ground beef already with about a tablespoon of garlic, uh, chopped garlic, and so a little more salt and pepper, but this is a lot of, to, you know, season. And you guys know I love my pepper. So I'm just gonna whip up those eggs real quick before this bowl gets full. I'm splashing in the kitchen. All right, so my ingredients are mayonnaise and sugar, no sugar added Heinz ketchup. So about a half a cup of mayonnaise, mayonnaise, in here, carbs, and then, I don't know, a couple tablespoons. This is a little less than a quarter of a cup. So probably three tablespoons of no sugar added ketchup. I am adding an eighth of a cup, cup like a two tablespoons, I suppose, of Parmesan cheese to absorb its flavor, but it's also gonna absorb any extra floaty grease from the hamburger. I have found that the Parmesan cheese really helps with that. And this is about a quarter of a cup of onion and about a half a cup of dill pickles chopped up. You can use um, relish, dill relish, not sweet relish. Sweet relish is gonna have um, sugar in it. So you could use dill relish. 
So I'm just going to kind of whip this up a little bit. And this is the base of the casserole. I've seen recipes with egg, without egg, with mayonnaise, without mayonnaise, parmesan, you know, you name it. So that's the base for mine. If you don't want, you know, it to taste like a Big Mac, then don't add the mayonnaise and ketchup. It, or Keto Thousand Island is really what it is. Um, you could just do cheese, eggs, and hamburger. Season it however you like it. But this is how I like it. Let me get my stuff out of the way. Now I have what's left of this bag of shredded extra sharp cheddar. I don't know, it's probably two cups. But I, I want to leave some for the top. So I put about half of that in. And then I have a little bit of whatever's left, maybe a half a cup of mozzarella. No man left behind. Wow, is this like a fridge cleaner or what? I don't, sorry, I got yucky on my hands. Now I'm just going to stir this up because the next step is we're going to mix it with the ground beef. I did cook it ahead of time and I let it cool. Um, obviously adding ground beef to an egg mixture that's hot, you're going to scramble your eggs. And nobody wants scrambled egg casserole. It's getting to be fall, guys. I'm super in the mood for like casseroles and and all of that. Now, here's what's gonna be fun. I don't think this is, eh, that's hot still. All right, give me a minute. I'm gonna transfer the meat over, but it's still a little hot, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few more minutes. I got it in here. It's cooled off. I just wanted to get it out of that hot pan for a few minutes. I probably should have used a bigger bowl, but you know, this is how we roll around here. Um, you can make this as eggy or not eggy as you like. I have found that five eggs is pretty good for my consistency, that I like it. Um, the other thing is if you're not a raw onion fan, but you like the flavor of onion, cook it with the hamburger. I love raw onion and I love raw onion on hamburger so I it will get cooked a little bit in here but it definitely is not going to be as cooked because at this point all we're trying to do is cook up the hamburger I'm um, no lies we're trying to cook up the eggs in this casserole so again it depends how eggy you would like yours to be I like mine at this consistency so two pounds of ground beef half a cup of mayonnaise about three tablespoons of no sugar added, um, no sugar added what? Ketchup, <laughs> good Nord. 18 and 18, an eighth of a cup of Parmesan, salt, pepper, cheeses, any kind of cheeses you like. The more cheese that you add to this, and I'm just gonna put it in, I'm not gonna sprinkle it just on top. The more cheese you add, the firmer the consistency is going to be, um, for sure. You can always put more cheese on top if that's how you want it, but I don't think it's necessary for me. And I'm going to be cooking this and then heating it in the microwave for lunch this week. So everything cooked works for me. Now, I have a pan here, not a nine by 13. I don't know what this pan is. It doesn't happen to say what the measurements are, but it's definitely smaller than a 9 by 13. I mean, it's just going to make thicker pieces, which is fine with me. And I'm actually, ooh, I'm actually going to have some for my freezer for future meals, which, you know, I love that. I am all about the life that I don't have to cook a meal for dinners or whatever. So I'll come home from work, take one out of the freezer, heat it in the oven, heat it in the microwave. I'm not a huge microwave fan, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So you can cover this, especially if you're gonna do cheese, maybe do the cheese at the end. And I'm gonna say this is gonna take 30 to 45 minutes, but honestly, it depends how thick you make it, you know, what size pan you're cooking it in and how much egg is in it. So it's kind of hard for me to tell you how long you have to cook this for. I will tell you, put it on a pan. 
because if it boils over or bubbles over, you're gonna have a mess in your oven. I am all about not having a mess in my oven. So most things that go in there, in there have a pan under it. I'm gonna clean up my kitchen and then I'll be back. Alrighty everybody, we're ready to make our sandwiches. Um, it took four to five minutes to make the chaffle, depending on how much of the batter you put in. This one here, these typically took four minutes. They have a nice, you know, heft to them. Now I will not put condiments on these sandwiches. I'm literally gonna put meat, top them and bag them and stick them in my freezer. And then on the day that I take them, I'll bring, um, here I'll show you. I have these little Tupperware containers that hold one ounce to an ounce and a half of another like Tupperware brand. I'll put some ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, something, pickles maybe in here and have it with my lunch or my dinner really. So I have a bottom chaffle, two pieces of turkey, two pieces of salami, and a lid. And that's my sandwich. That is it. Now, you can always add more, but I would say for the freezer, stick to your meat and your chaffle, and anything you wanna add extra, just use it on the day of, and not um, for freezer. You don't really wanna freeze them. So it took me, let's just say, an average of five minutes per sandwich, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It took about an hour to make all these chaffles. Here's what happens if you leave it in there a little too long. It's crunchy, but still delicious. Now in the oven, I have my um, cheeseburger casserole. It's got, I think about 10 more minutes. It's gonna go for about 45 minutes for the ingredients that I use. Now, for this process, I'm only using zip top baggies. The reason is I'm gonna use them this weekend. If I was doing a longer storage than just through the weekend, then I would um, wrap them better. But between Thursday and Sunday, I will eat all of these up. So I'm not overly concerned. Now, again, folks, some folks don't like the same sandwich, same meat, same everything. Just freeze your truffles. And you can honestly freeze them on a sheet tray and then bag them up and they won't stick together. But I am, I'm not fussy and I don't like to waste. And buying a bunch of lunch meat for one sandwich here, one sandwich there, it would be wasteful to me because I wouldn't be able to eat it all. As it stands now, the salami will last a little longer than that turkey. So most likely what'll happen tomorrow night when I come home or later tonight if I feel up to it, it's about 4.30 now, I will package it up into smaller packages and put it in the freezer because I don't want to waste. That's a lot of turkey meat that I probably won't eat all of. But these are going to go outside into my freezer. And now on the days that I have to go to my second job, right from my first job, I grab one of those out of the freezer, maybe some pork rinds to go with it or some such throw it in my lunch bag, keep it in the fridge at work, and then when I get to my second job at dinner time, I'll have a healthy meal for me that isn't carb laden and I can make better choices. So I'm gonna stick these in the freezer. I will show you my casserole when it gets out of the oven and then we're gonna put my lunch together for tomorrow. I won't need these because I don't have to work at my other job tomorrow. So these are going in the freezer. And here is the casserole. Now, as you can see, it's bubbling around the edges. It just came out of the oven. I'm going to let this sit probably 30 to 45 minutes to come to room, not room temperature, but definitely to not be boiling hot so I can cut it up and portion out. Probably half of it will be lunches this week, and then the other half I'll portion out and put in my freezer for dinners this week or next. Um, at this point, I could have put some of like, my ketchup on top and put it under the broiler like a meatloaf, but I think it's good like this. It has enough carbs in it. It would be really good with like a little side salad, um, probably with like a vinaigrette or something to give it some kick because, you know, you need a little acid to go with all of this. But 
it looks delicious. I think it's going to be the perfect lunch for this week. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I have to let it sit for about 45 minutes and then we'll come back to it, cut it, and you can see the pickles and onions. Oh, it's going to be so good. We'll be back. All right, we are all done. Here's breakfast. It's a little piece of sausage, two hard boiled eggs and some cheese. Um, and I'll just put the lid on this and that's breakfast. And then here is our lunch, which is the cheeseburger, well, Big Mac casserole. I'm trying to see if you can see it. Oh, so good. Tastes just like a Big Mac to me. So that's done. I'll pack a snack because I'm working till 7. So maybe some pork rinds and call it a day. So I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.